Hello, this is Gio. Hey, look what I have here. I have an 8-track tape player. This one's a realistic uh, TR-882 cartridge tape recorder, so it not only plays the 8-track tapes, but it also records. And if you're not familiar with what 8-track tapes are, they were very popular kind of pre-cassette tape uh, and during cassette tapes, actually. Um, in probably the mid 60s to all the way to the 80s they were kind of popular and this is what they look like it's uh, if i were to open one of these things up you would see a continuous loop tape so basically you can start playing and it'll continuously loop through the same cycle it's on four different tracks so you can have different music or audio on four different tracks that you can switch with this little button right here and uh, I think the total record time might be around uh, 80 minutes, if I recall. Um, but again, this would be divided into four separate tracks. So why am I showing this to you today? Well, this particular one doesn't quite work. Uh, I do have a plug in. You've got the uh, tape right here and I stick it in and it'll just start playing when I stick it in. I stick it in like that. You can see the lights turn on, etc but absolutely no sound. I, I do have it connected to speakers, and then I hit the, uh, let's see, the track switcher here, and it's not even switching the uh, tracks. You can hear the motor running, uh, so there is some kind of issue preventing it from playing. So we're gonna open this thing up today and see if we can fix this thing. Okay, so I did unplug it. Let's turn it around and the first thing I noticed is there's like five screws in back holding this little uh, board on. So we'll go ahead and remove those. And this should just pop off. There we go. Okay, this can slip out it looks like. Just like that, put that aside. And it's a little dirty inside there, but you can kind of see what's going on there. Um, let's see, I think there's some also, I think this entire bottom or this whole mechanism will come off. It does have some screws on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and unscrew those and see if we can get this thing to slip out. Okay, with those screws off, let's see if we can carefully try to get this thing here. Let's just, oh, yep, it slips right off. So let's get the cord out of the way. And there you can see, you can see the little case here. Put this aside. And right off the bat, you can see a problem. You could clearly see that the belt that uh, goes from the motor to the flywheel looks like right here uh, is totally degraded it's actually staining my fingers right there so that is definitely one problem there and then with it plugged in i'm just gonna test it out and you can see the issue here let's say stick that in the motor is operating and that's what we heard but the flywheel that uh, runs the tape is not of course running because it has a bad belt so another thing playing around with this, I discovered I do have to change this belt, but I also noticed that the track changer wasn't really working. When I stuck in the tape, uh, these lights weren't really, uh, it was stuck on, I think, number four and wasn't switching tracks. And that basically, if I could zoom in here, when I push the track changer, it activates a little solenoid here that uh, allows this platform here to go up and down and that will change the position of the head, which is right here on the tape. And it wasn't really doing that initially, it was stuck, but after playing around with it, it looked like I got it working. Uh, I'll push the button and you can see this little solenoid here and this platform is now moving. Uh, it wasn't moving at all before, but now it seems to be moving. So at a minimum, it probably needs some lubrication. Um, but it is working now just by, uh, it's probably just age uh, was preventing this from moving. But it seems to be switching tracks now, so uh, just a little lubrication should work on that. Okay, so I did unfortunately find one last issue that may make this 
unit unrepairable. And basically I was gonna take off the flywheel or cast spin here so I can uh, lubricate uh, the, the track switch mechanism. I turned the unit over and the fly flywheel fell off. And I'll just pull it out to show you what's going on. It's not supposed to just come out like that. There's a little pin that's supposed to hold it in place on the bottom. And you can see right here, the mount right here is completely broken off. This was not supposed to come out with the Caspin wheel. And you can see right here, this is where it sheared off. I'll go ahead and take this thing out to show you the whole thing. Okay, so here's the base that I took out. It's actually in terrible condition. Uh, you can see the little uh, screw hole is actually just fell off. So this is really degrading. And so this is what it looked like. And you can see it's really cracked up. So it's in really bad shape. And so this is what it looks like as a complete part. And so you can kind of see it in this direction. Here's the bottom of it right here. And you know, um, I hate to end this video without a complete repair, but I went online to try to see if I can find a replacement part, probably not new, but maybe an old used one. And I really could not find this Caspin mount. I did find a couple of others, but they weren't this shape and I really don't think they would work. Uh, this one actually has this pin that gets pulled out and holds the actual spindle or um, this caspin wheel in place. And I'm not sure why it fell off, probably just because it broke and so it was able to wiggle out. But uh, I couldn't find this kind of mount anywhere. And so I'll have to end this video with, uh, unfortunately, a non-repair. Unless some somebody out there who's interested in 8-track tapes uh, has this particular part and is willing to part with it so I can complete this repair. But until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit that like button at the bottom of the screen and even consider subscribing to my channel. I have many more videos to come. Bye-bye.